Cinderella from 2019 by the Flesh Eaters. On drums for the supergroup is DJ Bonebreak. He's played drums in several excellent punk bands, actually. He leads jazz bands, is a classical percussionist. Oh, yes. You also might know him as the drummer from a band called X. X has a new album out, Alphabet Land, and we're going to talk about it. DJ's here to talk about it. Welcome to the show. Good to be here, Chris. It's a pleasure. I'd say that you have one of the best punk stage names in the business, but DJ Bonebreak is your real name. I guess that kind of predetermined your path. I guess so. I, mean, I, I tried to find a punk rock name, but nothing was close to, to my name. I was using Don Bonebreak, you know, uh, when I came into the scene, and, and, it, and, and it changed to DJ. My middle name is James, and it was Billy Zoom's idea. He said, you know, uh, drummers always have their initials on the drum set. What's your middle middle name? And, you know... I go, James, he goes, DJ, DJ, oh, this is like DJ Fontana. That was uh, Elvis's drummer. And, <laughs> and it's, you know, it's a couple of years and it's stuck. So yeah, a bone break is, uh, it was originally Beinbreck years and years ago when my relatives came to the States. Well, be- they were here before it was the United States, you know, in the, and, and, uh, and they changed their name to bone break, you know, these tr- crazy Germans. So yeah punk rock name <laughs> yes if you didn't get into punk rock you could have also got into maybe some uh, assisting loan shark work that sort of thing or <laughs> uh, well I, I do i do that on the side you know that's how i really survive yeah. the muscle there I'm we go guy. <laughs> yeah. i want to get to the new album alphabet land dj this is significant because it's the band's first new studio album with the original lineup in what 35 years Something like that. Yeah, I've stopped counting, but I think it was probably 85 when yeah we did the last one with Billy Zoom. Uh, yeah, why did it take so long? Chris, tell me, why did it take so long? I don't know. Well, at least what inspired you to do it? We had talked about it over the years, and, you know, it, it's really difficult. You know, musicians know this. It's really difficult to record an album, or if you can record it, you know, what do you do with it? And, and can you make any money? And, and you have to promote it. And, 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 you know, for a while we were happy just, just going on tour, you know, when Billy Zoom rejoined the band in, in uh, 1997, we just, you know, we just played, we just played uh, around the United States and maybe 60, 70 shows a year. And, and, you know, then we went on and did our other projects and, you know, it takes time to write songs and rehearse. So, so, so for, you know, for a long time, both John and Nixine had their own, own, own bands. I have my own bands. Uh, Billy had his, his, uh, amplifier fixing business. So when we fin- you know, got back on the road, we just, we just, uh, we, you know, went to our, went back to our old lives. So, uh, I think what happened is, is, uh, you know, we talked about it for a while and, uh, fat possum records, we released our first four records about a couple of years ago. And, uh, when they heard we were touring a lot and, 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 uh, you know, that we, you know, we were still writing songs. They said, Hey, you know, we'll put out a record. So, so I think it, it was that. And also uh, meeting uh, Rob Schnapp, who's our producer. And we were really comfortable with him. You know, we worked on a project with him and, and uh, for the South American record live record. And, uh, and so, so things just came together and it took a while, it took a couple of years to do it. You know, once we, we uh, embarked upon it. So, uh, that's a whole story in itself, maybe not exciting, but yeah, so finally it came out and, and, and so, uh, and then there was a pandemic, so just our luck, you know, <laughs> but, uh, uh, but, but at least it's out there, you know, it's out there to buy and, and, uh, it's on the radio. So that's good. <laughs> DJ Bonebreak is with me on Revenge of the 80s Radio. We're talking about X's new album, Alphabet Land. As a longtime host of this program, we, we're into 12 years now. I'm a quite a nosy fellow as well, a longtime broadcast journalist too. I usually hear a bit of pre-release hype, uh, at least whispers from sources. From X, nothing. The album dropped as a surprise. I had to double check my own brain on this one just to make sure I didn't miss anything. But it was a surprise. Well, well, it was a surprise to me too and everyone else. What, what happened is, you know, we recorded we recorded the, the first part of the album album in, in uh, 2019. It was like a test to see how it would go. And then we then we said, okay, let's let's record, uh, let's write songs, and we we did the the next sessions in January of this year, and then we you know put on overdubs and and uh, mixed it, and it was scheduled to be released in August of this year. We were going to do a tour, you know, we were going to go out with uh, uh, the Violent Femmes, and there was something with, maybe with the Damned and Cracker doing all these tours, and and then the pandemic happened and. 
And we just went, well, what do we do? We can't release it. We can't tour behind it. And then Fat Possum, they said, well, maybe we'll release it next year. We love the album, but, you know, it was that kind of thing. What do we do? And everyone's scrambling. And finally, they said, well, let's just release it now. And, and within one week, they had released it. I think it was, it was in the middle of April. And they said, okay, let's release it next week. I talked to our manager. He said, what do you think about this idea? And I went, well, I don't know if it's a good idea. I mean, you know, <laughs> is, it insens- is it insensitive to release new music, to sell things during a pandemic? People were dying and, you know, it was re- really so terrible. And then I, I, I looked on the internet and I saw, oh, okay, people are releasing stuff, Fiona Apple. And, 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 and so they got it together within one week. They released it on the 40th anniversary of our first album, Los Angeles. They said, you know, let's try to make it by then. And they released it on uh, Bandcamp exclusively just for downloads. And you can order the, you know, the vinyl, you know, at the end of the the, the, the summer. And, and, uh, and I was really happy to see the responses on Bandcamp. You can read reviews and people again this is they were saying this is just what i need you know it's so terrible it's you know we're locked down and it's you know we, we have new music by x so 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 i was really happy of that about that response but but uh so yeah it did come out of nowhere it really it was just like that it was just you know a week seven days i can't i can't believe that they had, they did it that quickly you know of course it was all it was all mixed and you know mastered ready to go you know uh way in advance so that's that story. <laughs> yeah. Alphabet Land is more reminiscent of early X. We'll be playing Delta 88 Nightmare a little bit later on. That's one where we hear both John Doe and X Scene Cervenka singing together at the patented X Fast pace of the time. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, it's an old, old fast song. I mean, most of the songs are pretty fast on this, but but yeah, yeah it's Los Angeles one, fast. One, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. I mean, it was one of our earliest songs. It, it, they had the song. Well, they had a lot of songs before I I joined you know, in 1978, but they had, they recorded it with someone else as a demo before I was in the band. And, uh, yeah. And, and, and I was glad when we did, when we did the session, uh, you know, it's, it's a really fast song. And, 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 and I was glad, I think we got it in one take cause it's an easy song, but it's just like a perpetual motion song. It's, you know, it just, bam, you just go, you know? And, and uh, so, I was glad we, I just forged ahead. Okay, we're not going to stop on this. We're not, not stopping for anyone. You know what? The, the, the album is called Alphabet Land. The, the, originally, the, the, that song, it's a song called uh, Alphabet Land. It was originally called Mercury. There's a couple lines in it. Something, Exine, I think, wrote the lyrics, and it's Alphabet Wreck is, is one of the lyrics. And later she goes, <laughs> Alphabet, my, Alphabet Mine, M-I-N-E, Alphabet Mine. And, and Billy, Billy Zoom kept going, let's play that song, Alphabet Land. And Ed X said, no, it's not Alphabet Land. It's, <laughs> it's called Mercury. And then he goes, but I heard the Alphabet Land in it. He goes, no, it's Alphabet Mine. You know, and then and then Billy is just, he just persevered. And every time we rehearsed, he'd say, okay, let's play Alphabet Land. And finally, we just said, we, you know, okay, okay, we'll call it Alphabet Land. And then <laughs> ultimately, the, the album is called that. So there's there's a little bit of randomness in the in the band. Well, the name has more to do with X anyway, Alphabet Land, Mercury. You probably should have named it Xenon if it wasn't anything else, if you wanted to get the little X factor in there. But that's a different story for a different day. Yeah, I, yeah. I also know, DJ, yeah. that Alphabet Land features, once again, tag-teaming lines between Xene and John Doe. You can see that a lot, especially in tracks like Star Chamber. Now, did I hear some Tennessee Ernie Ford influence in there? Uh, yeah, you, you heard, you heard, you definitely heard that. It's, it's, I thought yeah, so. It, it's, yeah, and it's, uh, yeah, I think Merle Travis actually wrote the song. And it's like, yeah, it's like, uh, you load 16 tons and what do you get? I guess, yeah. But so how did he, John did it differently. He said, uh, I've got 16 tons and what, uh, and what did I get? another town over <laughs> and, and wait, another town over and covered in sweat instead of another day older <laughs> and deeper in debt. You know, so it's like a, just a tribute to, to that, the, the, yeah, Kenny Sierney Ford. And, uh, yeah. They're both definitely yeah, relatable. That, I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Chris Cordani here. This is revenge of the eighties radio. DJ bone break is with me. We're talking about the new album, alphabet land. I want to talk with DJ about that a little bit more and some of his other work. All that straight ahead.
from 2016, Three Little Words by the Bone Break Syncopators on Revenge of the 80s Radio. That's led by our guest, DJ Bone Break of X. X has a new album, so we're going to talk about the Syncopators in a little bit. We're talking Alphabet Land right now. DJ, I see some of the tracks were already created, like Delta 88 Nightmare and Cyrano de Berger's Back, already during the Los Angeles days of the 80s. Yeah, uh, so what happened is, uh, yeah, we, I, I think... Uh, Delta 88 and uh, Cyrano de Berger's Back and there's the other one, I Got a Fever. Those were songs that, that uh, they were way back. I mean, just before Los Angeles was, was recorded, you know, the early, early X stuff. And, and they didn't, they never were released except uh, Cyrano de Berger's Back was, was recorded uh, with Tony Gilkison uh, in, uh, I think it was 1987. We did a version of that. So what happened when we had we hadn't recorded as a band for for a number of years, uh, we did a test what we call a test recording. I mean, we was it was a real recording, but we said let's go into the studio and record some of our older songs, and then and then maybe one song, a uh, one new song, which was Angel on the Road, which was on the album too, and and let's just see how it goes. You know, working with Rob Schnoff as producer, and so that was that was in January of 2019. We had two tracking days. The first tracking day, we recorded four old songs, and the second day, we worked on the new one. So it was the, I mean, it was it was, you know, it was to see if we could if we could record together, just to make it you know make us feel better, and, and you know, and, and and it turned out really well. And and so 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 yeah, after those sessions, we said, okay, we can really do this. It's it, it sounds good. The new song sounds good. We can we can work as a band in the studio. You know, we still have a lot of energy. So that's why those songs are on there. And, you know, and, and they, they were never released like uh, Delta 88, I think, was on, on uh, the anthology record. Was a, there was a demo of it. And uh, I've Got a Fever uh, may have been a demo somewhere, you know. And uh, so, so, yeah, and we, we hadn't recorded Cyrano with, with Billy Zoom. So he put a different twist on it. He made it kind of almost a funky sounding song. So that's the story on the older songs. And I think I think. Three of the older songs ended up on there, and then the, the, all, all the other ones are brand new. That is true. Cyrano de Berger's back also offers that different tone and rhythm to Alphabet Land. Again, most of it was the fast X stuff. This one was, uh, as you said, funky, jazzy, if you will. Plenty of sax, too, by the way. Yeah, Billy Zoom, you know, uh, has played sax. I mean, that's that was his original, well, I don't know if it was original instrument, but all through, you know, junior high school and high school, he was a saxophone player, you know, and... Uh, you know, pretty accomplished sax- saxophone player too, and and so over the years, you know, he'll pull it out and play that play a little tenor sax or baritone sax, and uh, so yeah, the last few recordings, he's he's added a few, you know, added sax to a couple songs, uh, and live too, t- live he'll play it on on a couple songs, he'll he'll put put it on a stand, and uh, while I'm playing vibes, we do a little, you know, we do a little uh, musical chairs, you know, where we play around a bit. I was hoping to hear some more vibraphone on the album, but hey, it, it, it just you know it just didn't work out. I mean, uh, you know, we I play a couple songs, three songs on, when we play live, and and uh, you know, X Inc. kept uh, uh, you know nudging me to to write a vibraphone piece. She said, you know, she said, oh, it'd be great, you know, just and, and, and it's some something instrumental, and I and I couldn't imagine what it would be with X. You know, maybe I was a bit lazy, but in a way, I'm kind of glad because. You know, the, the, the album is really, it is really like older X and it's really intense. And, you know, you know, some people ask me what, why, you know, the songs, most of them are pretty darn fast, you know, they're, they're, they're and, and, you know, and, and the, you know, the exception might be Cyrano, De Berger's Back. When we were uh, rehearsing them, we were thinking about playing them live. You know, we, we every time we'd, we'd get together, we'd say, well, how would this work live? Because people are go- going to want to hear them. You know, and, and and I know from past experience, if you write a more of a ballady song, you know, you don't want to play it as much. You might throw in one ballad, a couple things during the, the the set, but you know, you don't want to you want to play something that has a lot of energy. So. Yeah, you'll be you'll be like, oh, this is on the set again. Oh, I don't want to play that. Come on, it's too slow. <laughs> What's going on? I'll fall asleep. <laughs> yeah, you see people getting bored, and you get bored, and you know, a lot of adrenaline, you know, flowing. So, uh, yeah, so so most of them are kind of you know pretty up tempo. Let's see. Did I answer the question? Uh, yeah, I, I guess I did. <laughs> D- DJ Bonebreak is with me from X on Revenge of the 80s Radio. I have you here on the show now, so let's dive into more 
about what you've been doing over the years, too. We probably need several more hours to dig deeper in the plethora of non-X projects you've been involved in, from the eyes to the knitters to all the way up the line. But let's at least talk about some of them. In 2019, Chris D came on the show to talk about the new Flesh Eaters album with the group's more well-known lineup, you were a part of that. He gave us the story, but let's hear it from your end. What inspired you to want to put together I Used to Be Pretty? Well, I mean, you know, the, the Flesh the flesh Eaters, I mean, they go way back to the, you know, I think I recorded with Chris in 1978. And then in 1981, we, we put out uh, A Minute to Pray, A Second to Die. And I played marimba on that. And that was with Dave Alvin and John Doe and, and, and uh, Steve Berlin and uh, Bill Bateman. And, and so... That classic band from 81, I mean, we played maybe eight shows at the time because we were all in other bands. Over the years, we, we do reunions, not very often, like every 10 years. And uh, let's see. Uh, so, so, so was it uh, 2000? I mean, 20, uh, 2018, we did a tour and uh, it wasn't that long. It was maybe, maybe a couple of weeks. And then we, we said, well, this is really great. Why don't we record some of these songs, you know? And then Chris said, yeah, I've got some new songs. Chris D., the singer, uh, I've got some new songs. Maybe we can get together. And and so we just somehow pulled it together. It was like, <laughs> uh, you can't imagine. You have someone from, you know, yeah, from the Blasters, from X, from Los Lobos. You know, Dave Alvin has his own, own, own thing. And it got down to, okay, we've got these five days in, I don't know what it was, March. Five days when we can all be together in the studio uh, and we went in there and we did all, we did the album and, and, uh, and then, and then we said, okay, let's do a tour, you know, we have to do a tour. So, 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 uh, you know, 2019, we did, we did about, uh, 25 dates. We played, you know, pretty much every market in the United States, you know, and, and, uh, it was great, really fantastic. So, so, you know, I played, I played marimba and vibraphone in that. So I get to, I get to do some of that. And then the, the other thing, I mean, I do a million projects, but, but, Chris D also has another project called the Divine Horseman. It, was, it came after the Flesh Eaters, and they they had lots, of, maybe four or five albums out in the '80s and '90s. And I just recorded a record with him in September, and it's with Chris D and Julie Christensen and uh, Peter Andrus. And it's it's a you know it's 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 similar to the Flesh Eaters, a little maybe a little more hard rock. And he's trying to release that. He has, he has to find a label for it. And then I do other things. It's, it's endless. I have a band called Two Heads, an instrumental band. We just recorded something. We're trying to get it out, you know, try to probably put it out ourselves with my friend John Mormon and Victor Krummenacher, who, who plays uh, with Camper Van Beethoven and, and Willie Aaron. So Two Heads, watch for that. And then I play with another band called Dead Rock West, uh, uh, Frankly Drannon and Cindy Wasserman. And it's, it's, it's like a, it's a really beautiful like a pop band, really, you know, the two two singers that sing together, like can't imagine, just so amazing. And uh, and then I, I I was playing with the Devil's Brigade with Matt Freeman. We we played a bunch of shows and, and going going uh, back a little Matt, bit. Matt, and and then and yeah, and then you're asking about the Bone Break Syncopators, and and that was a like a country swing band, jazz band that that uh, you know we I started in 2000. Uh, I met uh, T.K. Smith, uh, the guitar player, said, hey, I hear you play vibraphone. You want to join the band? You know, and it was like a, a little country country swing band. And we did, you know, we did, uh, uh, yeah, 30, big, basically 30s jazz. But but because uh, we had uh, Jeremy Wakefield on the a lap steel guitar, you know, had that had country swing type of sound. So and, and, and you know, we played for, for years and years and we finally put out a record and, and it's out of print. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, you know, but 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 it was a way for me personally, I mean it was a way for me to play uh jazz vibraphone. Because I was bored of playing drums all the time and 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 and, and I, I I played marimba with growing up being a classical player, but I never really pursued jazz. So it was my way to learn you know, all this, like three little words and all, you know, all those, you know, uh, you know, the classic Benny Goodman songs and Lionel Hampton stuff. And, and it was really, you know, really fun. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a bad player. I'm not a great player, you know? <laughs> and that's why I, I took a break because it's, it was so frustrating because I'm, you know, it's, you can't do, it's hard to do both things at once. You know, it's hard to, hard to, you know, I mean, jazz is such a specialized thing 
you know, to be kind of mediocre, <laughs> it's not, you know, but, but the band is really good. Everyone in the band, I mean, they're just smoking, you know. DJ People can watch you play vibraphone on YouTube with the orchestra super strength. I will have to say that I respect any band that has an accordion and a vibraphone in at the same time. Yeah, that 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 was a wild band. Yeah, we that that was another step for me because I was, uh, you know, I, I would, it's a long story, but I started taking uh, marimba lessons again in the in the early '90s, and and then uh, I met a friend, uh, Paul Ekman, at a session. I was playing drums, and he said, "Hey, you know, I do." I, I told him I play vibraphone. He goes, "Oh, you should come to a jam session." So I, I started jamming with him, and then and then I we started exchanging records. And I go, "Oh, listen to Cal Jader," you know, <laughs> who's wow. you know. And and, 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 and and he's going, I haven't heard Cal Jader. So we decided to uh, try to play Cal Jader's songs. And then we got some people together, you know, and started jamming. It was just a jam band. And then we said, hey, you know, trying to play Cal Jader stuff, we're like, we're like second rate Cal Jader players. Let's let's write our own material. So people started uh, contributing stuff, you know, and then we so we put it, we ended up putting on a couple of records on Dionysus Records. And we played L.A. shows all the time. We played a million shows. Uh, but, uh, you know, after a while it, it just kind of dissipated because, you know, people get busy and, and, uh, you know, you don't make any money, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to sustain a band, a six piece band with, you know, accordion, two or three percussionists, you know, uh, guitar, organ, uh, guitar, uh, you know, trace, uh, you know, it's like upright bass and vibraphone, you know, it's all this great stuff, you know, and, and, uh, I'm just rambling on, but, but, uh, but but we had a great time playing kind of a you know psychedelic version of, of Cal Jader stuff you know we, we you know we would play kind of Sun Ra type songs and you know <laughs> kind of got out there at times. DJ Bonebreak is with me on Revenge of the Eighties Radio. We're talking about X's album, the new one, Alphabet Land, and the varied world of DJ Bonebreak music. DJ, let's get back to the album. You released this, you quick released it in the middle of this COVID pandemic and all the shutdowns. That means no big concerts for a while. What kinds of plans might X have to promote the album uh, or, or maybe tour later when things clean up? Yeah, that's the idea. I mean, we're trying to think of ideas, you know, ways we can do things. I, I'm not sure what it's going to be. You know, if we'll do something temporary, something temporary like record I don't know, like do a performance without an audience, but you can't really, you can't do a lot of that. You know, it's like, yeah, I don't really know. It, it, everything is up in the air, but, but you know, we're trying to figure something out, but yeah, I guess what we'll do is we'll, we'll uh, try to do something next year, you know, when, when it's safe to go out in the meantime, we're, yeah, we're just doing interviews, trying to get the word out, you know, but, but yeah, it, 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 everything is up in the air, <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, I, you know, I, I, I mean, I started this year practicing drums, uh, you know, uh, uh, for the first three months, I, I was getting ready for a tour. You know, I was walking every day and practicing. And then that's what I do when I'm home. And then the lockdown came and then it was the same thing for another three months. It was like, it was mandatory. You can't leave. You got to stay home and practice. And now it's getting to the point where, well, are we ever going to tour? Am I, am I getting in great shape for no reason? You know, my wood shedding until I die. And, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, well, am I just going to, you know, I'm going to start practicing really, really uh, esoteric things. You know, it'll be, uh, who knows what it'll sound like when I when I get out of this room. The answer is, uh, gosh, I don't know. I can go on the road because I, I was thinking about it today. I was thinking, you know, I sometimes when I'm home, or most of the times when I'm home, I'm doing other projects, and I'll do weddings, and I'll play local gigs, and I'll you know play you know bluegrass, or you know people call me for all sorts of things. I'll do uh, square dancing, you know, like they'll do, they'll be like, a, you go to community center and you play for square dancers, you know, and some things are, you know, some things are actually really cool performances, but you know, but you're playing for dancers. And, and I'm, I really started to miss it. Uh, yesterday I was going, God, I really miss, you know, you miss just going down to the, you know, to the local market to get an ice cream, you know, when you're in lockdown. And, and I was, I'm really starting to miss just, just going out and playing music with people. I haven't been able to do that, you know? I mean, I'm glad I'm healthy and everything, but it's, you know, yeah, so simple things. That's the good thing about radio, DJ. Um, all I have to do is sit here and sit behind a microphone in a, a studio away from everybody else and still force people to listen to me. Yeah, yeah. I guess maybe I'll try to figure that out. Maybe I'll become a DJ. Oh, I am a DJ. Well, you are a DJ. Um, there we go. No. <laughs> 
DJ, how did the band wind up on Cartoon Network's Children's Hospital? I didn't know much about, uh, uh, you know, the show. Uh, it actually was an honor to be on that. It was really, really crazy and funny, you know. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know who someone, I don't know. I don't know how it happened. Someone was a fan of the band and uh, we said, sure, we'll do it. And what I realized about that is I'm the worst actor in the world. It was a good thing they didn't give me a lot of lines. But 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 the premise, uh, if you haven't seen it, is ridiculous. One of one of the doctors uh, played. He, You're the he, second he played, bassist, right? <laughs> he was, he's, yeah, he, played, he was our second bassist in the band, and and he had to choose be, between remaining a doctor or playing ba- second bass with X. Right. And, and we ended up kicking him out because we really just wanted to rehearse at his mother's house right, at, the, at the garage, garage or yes. something like that. And so, 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 yeah, it was, it was a really ridiculous premise, but, but the, but the, but the show is ridiculous and funny. It was a great you show. Know, I just, loved that just, show. Yeah. 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 So, so I, you know, I didn't, I didn't know about it until after, and I started watching them and it's just, it, it it's, uh, you know, right up, right up my, my alley, as they say. And yeah, it's a great show. <laughs> DJ Bonebreak, thank you for being with us on Revenge of the 80s Radio. Thank you, Chris. It was, it was my pleasure. And don't forget the new album from X is Alphabet Land. You can find DJ's music at djbonebreakmusic.com. That's djbonebreakmusic.com. The 2019 Flesh Eaters album is I Used to Be Pretty. You'll hear a lot of that here on our show, Revenge of the 80s Radio. And here's a track from Alphabet Land, Delta 88 Nightmare, new from X on Revenge of the 80s Radio. <laughs> 